Hey guys, uh, today I'll be going through a quick guide on how to verify PGP signatures and also verify the hashes of a session or a Loki release because we do this for all of the releases. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to either uh, or go to a release page. So we have releases on our GitHub, but we also have releases on Get Session and Loki.network as well. Uh, at, and in all locations we'll have this button which either says signatures or in the case of GitHub we have this little text box here which has all of the signatures uh, and hashes for those releases. Uh, so the reason you might want to do this is to verify that the source uh, of the binaries that you're downloading and using is uh, the Loki project and that those sources have been modified uh, as they're being given to you Cool, so if we grab the signatures here on the desktop release, which we're going to be using as a um, candidate for this tutorial, we'll grab those and go copy. We can click out. Uh, we'll also need a utility like GPG for USB. Uh, you can download this, it's free software uh, on the internet just by Googling GPG for USB. There's also Cleopatra and uh, GPG for Win. All of the processes are very similar. You'll import a key and then you'll verify uh, the PGP message. So we're going to paste this in first so we can see we've got our message here. And we just did that by right clicking and going paste. And then we're going to want to import a key. Uh, so to get that key, we can see here these following hashes have been signed for verification using KeyJeff's GPG keys. Um, that's me, uh, but it might also be signed by Doyle or some other member of the Loki team. So if we go here and grab this link, uh, and this will be different depending on who actually signed it, but if we grab this link and put it in the browser up here, uh, this will take us to the Loki project, Loki core repository, where uh, there's a bunch of our GPG keys. So you can see uh, Key Jeff, Josh, Jason, uh, Simon. Um, but we're going to use my key because it's signed by my key here. So I'm going to grab that, Control C, copy it. Uh, and then we're going to go import a key. And in this case, from the clipboard because we just copied it. Uh, I already have this key imported, but if you didn't, uh, you'd want to click OK here. Uh, and then it's going to show up in this side panel over here. Uh, and once you've done that, you just want to place a tick beside the key that you want uh, to use to verify that this is actually signed by that person. So in this case, I want to verify that this is signed by key. Uh, so I just go up to this thing and click verify. And that's going to check that this uh, message is actually signed by Key Jeffries. If I was to choose another person's key um, and go verify, it wouldn't verify. Uh, and this uh, would not say this text is completely signed, for example. Um, cool. So now that we've got that verified, we want to actually download the release itself, uh, the file itself, and check that the hash matches the hash that's beside here. Uh, so for example, I'm going to download the Windows version uh, for desktop, which I already have uh, actually on my desktop, but uh, uh, that's right over here. Uh, so to to get the hash of the package that I actually downloaded, I'm going to do I'm going to press Shift and then right click and then I'm going to open PowerShell. It's basically just a um, kind of more powerful command prompt on Windows. Uh, and then I'm going to type in. Uh, let me see. I was doing this in um, CMD before, uh, but it's just cert util uh, cert util. Uh, then you put uh, hash file. Uh, then you're going to put the file path. Uh, so the file path is the folder and the name of the file that you're dealing with. So for example, this is on desktop, but because the PowerShell has been started and you can see the path is already on desktop, I just need to specify the file here. For example, if it was in this temp folder, then you would need to specify users Potter desktop temp and then the file. So uh, you can you can easily get a um, the path of the file just by uh, clicking on the top of Explorer and it'll give you the full path here. You just copy that in and you go CD and it'll change the directory that uh, PowerShell is running into that location then you specify the file past that point. So hash file, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type the first uh, few letters of uh, the file I'm looking for and then I can use tab to autocomplete and it will complete the file name here. And the last thing I want to do is specify the hashing algorithm that I want to use. So in this case, I want to use SHA-256. Uh, and then I'm going to click Enter. And you can see um, here, 
it's come out with the SHA-256 hash of this uh, installer here. So now what I'm going to want to do is come back here and check that that SHA-256 hash matches the one for Windows. So I can see session messenger Windows 1.0.5 and that's obviously the same as the file that's being hashed here. And I can see that the um, hash is 48E5DD and it's the same here. You can do a full uh, comparison, but it's usually just enough to visually check that they're uh, similar, you know, check the middle characters uh, and the last characters because it's pretty difficult to brute force something that's as similar as this. So uh, that's kind of just the, the overview of how to verify a package. There's nothing really else that you need to know. Um, we're going to be doing this on multiple platforms, so if you're not using Windows, we'll have a guide on how to do this with uh, Mac and also Linux, but uh, thanks for watching guys.